Hi everyone, I am so excited to be here for the Teach for All Global Conference. I am Chizma and I am 11 years old. I, am, I study at Blue Mountain School. I am from Anambra State, Nigeria. I got the privilege to interview Malala. This was so important to me because Malala speaks up for girls' education and I admire that about her. Thank you. Bye. Good afternoon, Malala. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Chudema and I am from Nigeria. I love the work you've done for girls' education in the past so many years. And I am so excited to interview you today. Hi, Chidinma. I'm also very excited for this conversation and I'm looking forward to your questions. Since the COVID pandemic, people's lives have changed. Students around the world have been schooled. We are finding new technology solutions every day. Communities are coming to help each other and so much more. What has been your personal experience of the pandemic and what has kept you going through it? So when the pandemic started, I myself was still in my last year of university. Uh, and I thought I had still a few more months in Oxford University and I will get to spend time with my friends and enjoy a bit more of the college time. But unfortunately, um, you know, st straight in March, we were sent back home and uh, we weren't able to go back to our college. And so I took my exams at home. I, you know, I graduated at home. So my, the rest of, uh, you know, the university life was just all home life. It was very difficult to manage it with two of my younger brothers. They would make noise all the time. Everybody had a different schedule and timetable. And it is very hard to study, you know, in such an environment. Uh, and I'm sure it was difficult for all the students, some were, you know, coping with a lot of difficulties and, uh, you know, in, in, in their revision and in their work, they did not have enough space. And uh, because of this pandemic, so many children, uh, you know, stopped going to school because it was not safe anymore. And it was a reminder that how important education is. And when children miss out on a few months or a few weeks or then years of education, it is a huge, huge loss for the economy. And it is a reminder to us that there are 130 million girls who are out of school and because of this pandemic that there, there is a risk of more girls losing out on their education. So, you know, for me, I myself coped with it. I graduated and I am, you know, now, uh, you know, in my post-university life, but there are so many children who are struggling in this time. Thank you for sharing that, Malala. My personal experience of the pandemic has been good and it has also been bad. It has been bad because I was not able to go to school I missed a lot of my friends. I was not able to come out of my house and so much more. It has been good because I was able to learn new things during this pandemic. I was able to spend time with my family and I was also able to learn a new tra trade, which was hairdressing. What was most concerning to you about girls' education before the pandemic? And has it changed at all since then? Before the pandemic, uh, there were 130 million girls out of school. Uh, Malala Fund, we did this research uh, on, you know, what happened in the cases of Ebola, which was a similar case, you know, it affected a region and how many girls dropped out of school uh, and never returned to school. So based on, on that study, it showed us that in this COVID uh, pandemic, there is a risk that 20 million girls may never return to school, either because they'll become victims of early child marriages or they will become the breadwinners of their family, they will have to become financial support for their family, or, um, you know, it is highly unlikely that their parents will prioritize the girls education than the boys education. Uh, and a lot of them, you know, it, it will have so much pressure on them. So there's a huge, huge risk that, you know, girls and women would be vulnerable in this situation. Uh, and uh, it is, you know, a reminder to us that we should not neglect girls because they're at a very high risk. And uh, as we keep on saying that girls are a source of empowerment for, for society. So we, we must not ignore this. Thank you so much. I totally agree with what you said. On to my next question. What possibilities do you think might exist in this new era that didn't exist before? Before the pandemic, we were talking about online learning and distance learning and uh, you know the pandemic it has reminded us that things may not always be the same it may not always be in our favor things change you know disasters uh, disasters happen environment changes 
uh, people become refugees. There are so many human and natural disasters that are out there and this pandemic has affected us globally. But what we learn from it is that there is technology with us. Technology has assisted us uh, in learning from homes uh, and it has assisted teachers. Even there are difficulties attached to it, but at the same time we have learned that we need to broaden our uh, or understanding of what education means. Is it just limited to school buildings? Can we go beyond that? And how can we reach to like the most uh, marginalized students? There are some students who are, you know, living in distance areas, in rural areas. It is sort of uh, allowing us to think about those children who uh, men, you know, for whom it would be very difficult to go to their schools because of distance, because of travel issues, uh, and because of, you know, if there are girls who are more vulnerable when they're traveling or when they're walking to school. So it is allowing us to think about more ways, you know, um, and uh, so I think uh, what we have learned is that, yes, we can cope with things, we can improve our world, we can make it even better. Uh, and I hope that, you know, after this pandemic, we don't go back to the way, the way things were, but we reset the system and we make it even better for each and everyone. We have realized that, you know, our health system uh, and our economic systems are not in favor of the people. They are in favor of, you know, just a few. They're not in favor of the majority. So it's important that we, we reset these and we set a future which favors the most vulnerable people, which favors, um, you know, women and children, uh, and we create a world which is equal and fair for everyone. I'm so glad to hear that everything wasn't bad. And I am so happy to hear that we still have some things to look forward to. As a young girl of 11, what made you realize that your voice was powerful and that it mattered? I am particularly curious about this because I am currently 11 and I am wondering how we can help more young people realize that the voice is powerful. So I was exactly your age uh, when uh, my education was taken away from me. I was 11 years old in Swat Valley in Pakistan and the Taliban banned girls education. Uh, they said that no girl is allowed to go to school. And that was the time I realized that education in a school was not just a place of reading and writing, but it was a place of empowerment for women. That is where women and girls found their voices, their future. So um, since then, I have started speaking out. I wrote a blog. I volunteered to appear in documentaries. I spoke to local and national TV channels. And in the beginning, it's very difficult to see the impact. You are like, okay, it's just one interview. What is this going to do? It is just one piece of article that I'm writing. What is this going to do? But with time, you realize that people start listening to you. People see the impact of your voice. And this and they see that you have not given up, you are committed to your cause. So I, you know, I continued speaking out and then, uh, uh, you know, at the age of 15, I was attacked for speaking out for girls' education. Uh, but what I have learned from my activism is that, you know, the voice of one girl can be really powerful, that it can scare people with guns. So we should, you know, we should never give up. Uh, we should always uh, believe in ourselves uh, and and use the skills and use uh, and use the uh, the tools that we have, whether it's our voice, whether it's our writing, whether it's our art, um, these are very valuable things that we should not take them for granted. They can have a huge, huge impact uh, for change. That is truly inspiring. It makes me want to continue speaking up for girls in my community. You have to, we need you. Your voice is very much needed. Thank you so much. Okay. Was there a moment or an incident in your past 10 years of work that made you consider stopping speaking up for girls' education? There, I must be honest, there were many moments. Uh, sometimes you go and you meet a world leader and talk to them about, uh, you know, investing more in girls' education. And then they sort of say yes, but they don't act, they don't change policies. Uh, and it, it is really disappointing when you realize that not everyone is as passionate about education as you, that things take longer. Initially, uh, you know, when, uh, when I was receiving so much support around the world and I was like, yes, everybody should understand that girls' education is important. Why are millions of girls not in school? Why are girls at risk? Why are girls getting married before the age of 18? Why are they suffering from child labor? This should not be the world that we should be living in. But that was the reality. And I used to wonder like, why is this happening? Why do, why do things not change? So it is frustrating. And you know, you are an activist and you might face the same difficulties in your journey as well. 
but what you need to realize that you know if even even though these are disappointing moments this is not uh, for me not a failure and we should not give up um for me failure is is when you yourself give up that is a moment of failure so as long as i keep going i believe that this you know this mission will continue and i believe that our dream will come true one day uh, for as long as we don't give up thank you so much you are truly inspiring i am also very brave to think that despite all the challenges you have been through thank you okay for the marana front and in other spaces over the years you have worked hand in hand with adults what are some things you have learned about what it takes young people to lead change and the role of youth adults partnership um the voices of uh, youth are very much needed right now uh, the young generation they are understanding the issues that will be impacting them in future and that are already impacting them from climate change you know we know that the world is not going to be the same in the, in the next few few decades uh, there are we are already seeing evidence there are disasters there are droughts there are floods many regions are affected and it always affects the most vulnerable communities uh, the most uh, the younger generation is aware of that we also see that there is inequality and we know that women and uh, and and people of you know minorities will be uh, more affected and will be more vulnerable we know that uh, there is poverty we know that there is discrimination based on gender based on your race based on your skin color so these are i am glad that the younger generation is aware and i think awareness is the first thing uh, when we talk about change and i do see activism in the youth too you know a lot of young people are out on the streets that speaking about climate change uh, there's greta thunberg and uh, and there are so many other uh, amazing and inspiring young girls and then there is you who is speaking out as well so i think with that the younger generation is realizing that it's not just you know awareness that is the first step but that is not enough we need to also speak out we need to take action we need to be on the streets and do our best and i think then the third thing is like you know for the adults to recognize that our voices are important and very much needed um i i believe that you know collaboration is important we need to include women we need to include younger voices in these conversations that decide our future there there are these you know rooms where on one table is just men older men sitting and deciding about our future that should not be the case our voices need to be heard there women need to be there younger younger people need to be there so i hope that we have space in that room uh, where uh, you know where our future uh, is 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 discussed so i hope that there is commitment towards education because girls education is something that we very much need for our future because when we invest in girls uh, it improves economies it helps us reduce um Uh, you know poverty it reduces the likelihood of wars it helps us tackle climate change so there are so many advantages that are out there uh, when we invest in girls and women empowerment uh, and uh, we need to bring raise more awareness so there's a lot that needs to be done but i think for adult out be it's it's time for you to listen to the younger generation uh, and uh, i would tell all the younger people that let your age not stop you from your activism is just a number your voices are are needed you know it all you know it more than the older people so believe in your voice okay so miss marara my last question for you today is what's the biggest lesson you have learned in all these years of fighting for girls education the biggest lesson that i have learned is that you know uh is that activism is needed action is needed and that we can create a world which is more equal fairer for everyone uh when we when we continue uh this this struggle and we have seen it in history as well you know only 100 years ago there were women who did not accept the the way society was they were like why did why do women not have the right to vote they stood up and they did activism and and look at the world right now women have the right to vote in so many countries right now so uh there were other you know activists from martin luther king to nelson mandela who raised their voice and who who said that this society is not equal we are treated differently just because of our skin color we are discriminated the society is racist things need to change and because of their voices so much change in the world right so i think it's important for us to remind ourselves that you know 
with our voices, with our action, we can change this world. We can tell people that, you know, the way society is, it's not fair yet. It's not equal yet. We are not there yet. We still have a lot more to do. Uh, and we need to create a world which is, um, you know, in which women are treated fairly, in which girls can go to school, in which we live in a, uh, you know, in an environment uh, where we breathe uh, clean air uh, and where we do not face uh, natural disasters. Um, so that is the world uh, that, that I hope we can see. Thank you so much, Ms. Mara, for speaking with me today and answering my questions. I have learned a lot from this conversation. I've learned to speak up for what is right and I should always be brave no matter what happens. Thank you so much for teaching me all these things and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was so nice talking to you and good luck in everything that you do in your studies, in your work, in your activism. Thank you so much. Thank you.